Hello, I'm Rob Himberg. I am the director of Upland Hills School, where we are today uh, in Oxford, Michigan on Indian Lake Road. Uh, originally, Upland Hills Farm School, uh, dating back to uh, 1970, was our first year. So we're in the conclusion of our 50th year at the moment. So this is currently um, finishing my ninth year at Upland Hills School, uh, along with my two children who are also here. Um, I came by way of a, a school up in uh, northern Michigan called the Leland Aw School. Um, before that, I was at a really wonderful school out in the Bay Area in, in California for quite a long time. And uh, my connection originally to this place is through my wife, Kina, who was a student here when she was a young girl. So I've known about Upland Hills for many years and heard all these fascinating, uh, almost uh, sort of mystical stories of her experience here as a young child and was always very curious about it, of course, being an educator. Uh, and then finally had the opportunity to visit and get to know some of the community here. And um, when it came time for our founding director, Phil Moore, uh, he started to consider uh, his retirement and next phase. And he and I started to talk more regularly and visit the school more regularly uh, and ultimately that's how I came to be here today. So I think one of the most uh, brilliant aspects of the school uh, originated in the very uh, founding when uh, uh, Knight and Dorothy Webster founded the school. Uh, Dorothy had been a beloved teacher at Roper School until they moved way out here to Oxford back in the mid-late 60s. And uh, in that moment when they formed the school, they decided to do something that was, I think, very innovative and courageous and different at that time, which was to create a loved-based school environment. And by that, they were really saying, we want to educate and see the whole child. We want to care as much about their social, emotional development as we care about their academic development, of course. And, uh, and that persists uh, to this day. So we have a wonderful full academic program. Our kids run all the way through what would be the equivalent of eighth grade and then they go on to high school where they tend to do extremely well. Uh, but we run it a little differently while they're here. Uh, it's really important to us that kids have a lot of, of agency over their learning. So we, um, we put a lot of trust and respect into their ability to make decisions while they're here about their education. So uh, we have a whole program uh, in the afternoon where we offer you know, dozens of different kinds of classes and the students themselves get to choose the ones that they want to participate in. And those range from all our arts, performing arts and fine arts and music classes to uh, a woods walk class, which is kind of a natural science botany study, experiential study to uh, developing and creating our yearbook to working in our uh, organic kitchen, uh, to uh, studying um, the animals that live in the bottom of the depths of the ocean and why they're so fascinating and interesting to children. And, um, and, 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 and so in all of that choice, kids are able to pursue what is interesting to them, where it leads to passion and it leads to drive to learn and a joy of learning and an interest in the world around them. Uh, and so they really take school home with them and learning becomes something that is just an ingrained part of, of how they're developing. And there's, uh, our goal is for there to not be a separation between uh, how they're experiencing school and how they experience the rest of their lives in terms of their kind of wide openness to the world and their desire to uh, pursue the things they're interested in, to learn more uh, about what's around them, and, uh, and, and hopefully that creates the foundation for what becomes uh, a long life of, of learning and engagement and uh, a love of, of uh, collaboration, um, creativity, uh, knowledge uh, that we ultimately hopes, uh, hope becomes uh, the wisdom uh, that um, that emerges uh, throughout their lives. But that question, we get that question a lot, and you know, our our alums do really well, um, probably as well, like social emotionally, because they've had a chance to kind of know themselves. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. they've had an opportunity to like 
have space and time to figure things out in a smaller container that, we, I mean, we, the same things happen here and happen in all the schools in terms of conflict and all of those things. In resolution. But in resolution, yeah. but when you have a, when you have classes of 10 and 15 kids as opposed to so 25 and 30, yeah. the container's much smaller. Sure. And there's no getting away from the kids that you're, like, tomorrow's the same 10 kids, so yeah. you can't hide good and bad, right? Like, right. you know, there is no hiding here. Like, if, I, if somebody's having a bad day, we know it. So we, yeah. what's going on with you? Let's pick Everybody you up, figure listen. it out, as opposed to you're hiding in the back. And, like, my connection isn't just the grade on the paper, it's, hey, what's going on today? Yeah. Like, we're we're in, in community together. And that kind of happens all Love the way through that. the school, from yeah. the youngest children to the oldest kids. You know, there, there's a connection. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that, that, that's a really good point. I have been here now long enough that the first students that, um, that I was uh, really able to, to make a relationship with when I first came, they're all graduating college mostly now. And, um, and they're very, uh, they stay in touch. We're still close and they love to visit school when they're in town. People always ask me, uh, it's really common, well, how do you go from this tiny, little environment, this little school in the woods where you get to do things differently. How does that translate? How do these kids go to Lake Orion High School or Oxford High School or any of the, the local schools that are so much different in size and in scope and in, um, in a lot of you know, sort of structure? And, and I think the answer, it's a little uh, less uh, hard, it's a little subtler, it's a little harder to put your finger on it, but what they reflect back to me all the time is that they're really able to travel and be in any environment because they know themselves well. They have sort of a self-assured sense of, of who they are and what they're about. And, uh, and when you kind of are self-possessed in that way and you feel that sense of agency around learning and around your life, you can really exist in a, in a positive way in any environment. And, and that's often what the first thing I hear uh, from our students when they come back from high school or college or beyond. Uh, we call our uh, students who are in their last year here, we call them seniors. Uh, if they were in a, a typical structure, they'd be in eighth grade. So, um, but they're seniors to us because it's their last year. So in that final year, and there's a couple years uh, build up in terms of what we call passion projects and uh, sort of a, a, a kind of big experiential learning projects that they engage in uh, once they're in our upper school. And then in their final year, they choose a project that's really meaningful to them that um, in some way uh, gives back to the school and back to the community, but really demonstrates something that was of, of real significance and importance to their time here. So those exist all over the school from things like um, uh, building a basketball court, uh, which is actually a senior project this year. The kids are going to um, resurface it and repaint it and put in a new backboard and rim and, uh, and then create a netting because our ball often goes in the swamp because the, the, the basketball court is right next to the swamp, of course. Uh, but then there are wonderful projects in the theater and um, uh, different projects all around the school. Uh, a few years ago, a really wonderful student who loves music and is a great musician, she created an entire songbook and she wrote all the lyrics and, and transcribed all the music of all of our school songs into a, a book that now um, helps us, you know, keep singing those songs and teach all our kids uh, how to play them and how to sing them. So uh, those senior projects can take on uh, any form really that um, just has to be something meaningful and important uh, to that student and really be a reflection of something they've loved about their time here. In one way that that occurs is there are many rites of passage at our school. So our kids move from group to group like classroom or grade to grade um, and our kids stay in each group for one or two years depending on like uh, sort of de development across all the different domains and they see these things happening uh, that they get to experience whether it's that now they're big enough to go on our high ropes adventure course and that's a cool rite of passage or you get to a certain group and you get to do a certain trip off campus where we'll go up north for three or four days and have a special experience or it's just that your boundaries expand the area of the woods you get to play in uh, changes and grows and you get more independence and more freedom of course as you go which really um, 
culminates in a lot of these uh, sort of big senior year, uh, last year rites of passage, the Passion Project, um, Senior Project being one of them. And, and, and I think that in, in part helps create a, a really well knitted together community. And I know that word gets used a lot, but at a school with, you know, a hundred kids and about 70 families and, you know, a dozen full-time uh, teachers and me, um, we really are a pretty tight-knit group and, and there's a lot of really strong relationship building and the kids feel that and they feel ownership of this place uh, that they, you know, they spend much of their young lives here at school. So um, it's theirs, you know, and, and our job is, is to help sort of keep our arms around them and uh, really uh, let them grow and develop as whole human beings in the ways that are true to uh, who they are. I would say in, on average our, like the distribution of the students we have here is very typical, all a very typical distribution of learners. But for those children who might otherwise be identified, um, they often don't meet that threshold here, I think, because there's such an opportunity for uh, learning, you know, active learning, experiential learning. Uh, we have small groups, so the students are very well known and understood, so we can respond to their needs and anticipate uh, the needs that are coming. Um, and our teachers are very well trained uh, to help uh, if we need to have a specific maybe language-based learning intervention for a child at a young age, uh, we're able to see that and identify it and respond to it early. But the most important part is it's done in the context of a learning environment where every child has got multiple things in their day that they love to do and do really well and are esteemed for. So you might be a little guy who's you know, at your own pace with, with literacy skills but you are the absolute best tree climber in your group or you are amazing at basketball or you're a really good friend and everyone loves to play the games that you are able to to imagine and to think up and I think that allows for children to stay very intact and whole in believing in who they are and discovering that kind of continual evolution and discovering of, of who you are at that age uh, or you know through development and so uh, we're able to to really pinpoint and look at their needs and address those needs but in the context of thriving across all kinds of different domains. It's my very favorite thing about the school per personally having come from a school that did an incredible job of understanding and working with children who needed a different kind of learning environment. What drew me here uh, most of all was that all of that was happening here, yet there was zero identification of that in any way. Everyone's just a being in development here. They're just children who are beings in development. And when you look at it that way, you realize it's really about the environment and it's the ability of the adults to create an environment for all learners. And when the better you are at doing that, I, we think, um, the less children meet any threshold for uh, being uh, identified in a, in a certain way about their learning or about who they are. We use the word fit all the time, and that's true of all small independent schools or really any size independent school. Uh, the beauty of being an independent private school is you really can create the school that you believe in or the school that you want. And, um, and if you are really uh, forthright and good at communicating what that is, then the people who want that for their family and for their children, uh, they find you and they come and they visit and then their children visit for a few days and when we have really good alignment and we feel really strongly that the child and the family are a good fit, that they understand who we are and what we're doing and that's something they really want and their child is ready to launch into that, then we uh, make a, uh, an educated guess as best we can. Uh, it's somewhat subjective, but, uh, but we've honed in on, on our way of doing it that seems to really work. Uh, so it's, it's mostly about fit. Um, and, and what that looks like really depends on 
on each individual uh, independent school. We're really fortunate um, for the last number of years, um, really in the time I've been here, uh, we've been uh, full, which for us is right around 90 to 94 students is our absolute kind of capacity. And, uh, and we've been there for a number of years now and we've actually uh, had the good fortune of of continued high interest in the school so we do have a waiting list for most groups and a lot of interest in our youngest groups which is um, which is our hope that students come in and, uh, when they're just starting their school experience and then come all the way through the school so yeah we're feeling um, a very you know as I said very fortunate and blessed to to have so much interest in the school and and to be full because we do keep our class size is fairly small, so our younger groups are 12 students to a group and our older groups are a max of 16 students to a group. Yeah, the future, that's a very good question. If there was anything for me to learn in these very challenging last couple of years, it's um, maybe to pull back on thinking I know what's going to happen <laughs> next. Um, things have become, of course, uh, became so un unpredictable and continue to feel that way to some degree. Um, but you know, I think what's really helped us survive and, and thrive in these last couple of years is the foundation that was built beginning 50 years ago, which really has to do with um, sort of attributes and uh, over skills. Skills are important, of course, we're a school, so skills are very important for our students and in their learning. But I think what we're what really allowed us to, to thrive now and, and, and will help us continue to do that as we go forward um, is to know how we make decisions regardless of sort of what's coming up. Um, it allowed us to be really creative about creating uh, the outdoor school that we did last year and can, are continuing to do this year. And so I think the future for us is to lean more into the outdoor school aspect of what we do. We've always considered the natural world to be a primary teacher. Uh, so one area of growth that I'm really excited about is um, we have recently uh, started a uh, food program. So we have this beautiful uh, commercial kitchen that we built and um, our students, our families are able to order breakfast and snacks and lunch and it's all um, really good organic healthy food made from scratch that our kids absolutely love and we're connecting that to uh, a three acre garden that uh, Ken uh, Webster who's the one of the uh, children of the um, matriarch and patriarch of the school and farm. He has uh, grown this garden and we're putting vegetables and crops in and the goal is to grow a lot of the food that then goes into the kitchen that our our kids enjoy eating for lunch and for the kids to be involved in every step of that process and have kind of a full circle understanding of, of where food comes from, what it takes to grow food. And um, so we'll look at eco-literacy and we'll look at ag science and we'll look at nutrition and there's math and history and science all wrapped into there. And so we're really excited about uh, growing that program so that that's a specific thing that, um, that's uh, right in front of us in these next couple of years. In conclusion, I, I really want to emphasize if I haven't enough already uh, you know we're finishing our 50th year uh, which is a, a really feels like a really special time and a wonderful accomplishment for a small uh, tiny little school in the woods that started in a barn uh, at Upland Hills Farm in 1970-71 and so we're very uh, excited about um, the foundation that we've built over these last 50 years we're thrilled to be um, really thriving in this time right now and, and excited for, for what's gonna come next. And I wanna give a really special acknowledgement and, um, and enduring gratitude to uh, the founders of the school, the founding teachers. There was a group who really created uh, everything that that we have now and um, and that group of teachers and uh, school leaders um, they're an exceptional bunch and uh, we're all standing on their shoulders today and we recognize the responsibility that comes with that and the gift that that is and we hold it very dear and very close and uh, that really gives us our drive and passion uh, for 
creating the next 50 years Upland Hills School.